The consumer staples or consumer defensive sector focuses on providing goods and services which consumers need no matter their financial status. As inflation increases, reducing the buying power of the US dollar, the average consumer stops buying luxuries so they can continue buying food, beverages, household and personal care items, don't forget the alcohol and tobacco. Also included in this sector are companies which sell these items such as supermarkets. As consumers are consistently purchasing staples, they are always in demand, year-round making the sector non-cyclical. Today we are discussing how consumer staples companies perform in recessionary periods, what factors drive the consumer defensive sector, and how these factors will have an effect on consumer staples companies throughout the year. Stick around till the end of the video for the best free tool to find potential investments by sector. Understanding how the consumer staples sector fluctuates is a crucial step in building a defensive strategy as the consumer defensive sector has beat out the S&P 500 during the last three recessionary periods. This occurs because the lasting demand for products within the consumer staples sector allow the companies to generate consistent revenue throughout the recession, making them better investments in a bear market period. McKinsey quarterly shows the consumer staples sector have beat out all other sectors during the listed recessions as their EBITDA never declined more than 5%. If consumer staples are always in demand, then what drives the price? Although staple products are always needed, there are incredibly large barriers of entry as new competitors have a significant capital, re capital requirement due to large competing brands. Creating a substantial competitive advantage is crucial by offering a differentiated product that convinces the consumer to pay a premium. Furthermore, as explained by Miami University of Ohio, Customer sentiment plays a large part in the competition analysis of consumer staples companies as consumers have many options and an almost non-existent cost to switching brands. One of the biggest threats to consumer defensive companies are substitute products as most are easy to replicate at a cheaper price. We currently see this everywhere through the importation of cheaper Chinese made products. I believe that this factor is even more apparent in recessionary periods as certain families may need to cut their spending and they switch from the more expensive of brand names to cheaper alternatives. We know how consumer staples companies act with each other, but what are the macroeconomic drivers for the sector as a whole? Demand is otherwise stable, and the sector is not sensitive to inflation or interest rates. Gross domestic product, however, is an important economic driver as expressed by the tobacco and alcoholic beverage industry, which tend to increase during downtrends in the economy. Because brand recognition is so important in this sector, companies often have a large budget for marketing and branding. Just take a look at the top 10 holdings of the Consumer Staples Select Sector Spider ETF, ticker XLP. If you haven't heard of these companies, I'm sure you've heard of a subsidiary. Over the past year, XLP has more than 10% greater returns compared to SPY, Spider's S&P 500, beaten out only by Coca-Cola, ticker KO, who almost hit 25% relative returns. With Altria Group, stock ticker MO, the tobacco company, missing the mark by almost 5%. Taking a closer look at the individual industries. Beverage companies such as Coca-Cola and Pepsi benefit from improved economic conditions as expected sales increase. Furthermore, as this industry is highly competitive, companies are vulnerable due to capital intensive operations. Some current challenges in the packaged food industry stem from the supply chain. However, a fundamental shift in this industry is currently underway as technology has given us the ability to order our groceries and household products to be delivered. Speaking of the household products industry, cleaning and disinfecting have done incredibly well since the pandemic and sales on beauty products are expected to increase given the current cultural trends. Before we move on to the tobacco industry, you should take a look into the beauty products industry if you're not yet familiar. According to studies from Reports Global, L'Oreal, and Statista, the worldwide value of the industry is expected to increase by 62.4% from 2020 to 2025, and the U.S. beauty operations have consistently done so since 2013. On to tobacco. Performance has been lackluster as of late and and cigarette sales continue to decline, which is a good thing, just not for the dividends. This may be counteracted if consumers continue to move to new electrical and vaping alternatives. However, the electric cigarette market is currently under strict and ever-changing regulations. Additionally, companies such as Altria Group and Philip Morris are beginning to gain a foothold in the cannabis industry as legalization continues. Looking at the one-year relative performance of the consumer defensive sub-industries as reported by Finviz, it appears things look quite parabolic 
symbolic as staples have had their fair share of winners and losers, with farm products returning the most relatively at 20.87%, and education and training services coming in last, dropping 40.54%. Although the consumer staples sector has a low correlation to the overall market, they do often perform better when it rotates from a bull to bear market, which we previously discussed in my video on the sector rotation theory. Definitely check that out. So how do you find the companies which are expected to perform best in the future relative to their sector and measured on strength of technical indicators? The free industry summary tool from stockcharts.com, link in the description, offers an organized breakdown of the interest sector performance. It helps to use the table view rather than the chart view. And these are the year-to-date returns of the consumer staples sector. Sorting the industries by their stock charts, technical rank or scooter ranking shows which industries or companies are technically the strongest based on six indicators over various time frames. These values work on a relative scale where in the lower the ranking, the weaker the company is within their group. Measurements for the six technical factors are calculated by the percentage of time a security spends above or below the specific technical indicator. The long-term indicators are the 200-day exponential moving average, or EMA, and 125-day rate of change, ROC, each weighted at 30%. Medium-term indicators account for 15% each and are the 50-day EMA and 20-day ROC. Lastly, short-term indicators hold just a factor of 5% each and consider the 3-day average slope of the percentage price oscillator histogram, as well as the relative strength index, which we discuss all the time, RSI. Sorting the industries by their scooter ranking show although food products and soft drinks have the greatest year-to-date returns, distillers and vintners, as well as food retailers and wholesalers currently have the greatest upward momentum. You can then click on the industry name and be shown a chart of companies within the particular industry. Within distillers and vintners, Brown Foreman Corp currently have the greatest year-to-date returns at 11.5%, as well as highest scooter ranking for their industry at 90.3%. They're the makers of Jack Daniels and many other alcoholic beverages. And by the way, I had to look up vintners. It was a wine merchant. Within the food retailers and wholesalers industry, we see grocery outlet holding core with the largest returns at almost 40%. Adjusting the table to be sorted by scooter ranking, we can see wise markets topping the list. United Natural Foods, however, stock ticker UNFI, who have a high scooter ranking of 88.9, but have yet to see a positive price action this year, returning minus 2.2% year to date, could be a good opportunity. UNFI is currently trading at $48 a share, which is estimated to be undervalued by analysts, with a P.E. ratio of 11.76 and an EPS of $4.08. This EPS may be a little low compared to the industry as a whole, but UNFI have beat out their earnings estimates all year as they are expected to continue growing alongside revenue. Please show your support by liking the video and subscribing to the channel. If you found this video helpful, you should check out my sector by sector playlist. We just go through the stock market sectors, all 11, and do the same exact thing. We've already done energy, and there's many more to come. As always, I'm Patrick Zimmerman. Thank you for your time, and have a nice day.